I'm going to take you through a, a example game before we go on to the actual games just so we can get an understanding of where we're coming from so say we open with our e4 pawn attacking the center and the opponent comes down the idea being for the strategy is around attacking pieces and getting as many pieces off the board as you can not as quickly as possible not as dirty as possible but just to get pieces off the board if you can which is of benefit to yourself so we're attacking this pawn here maybe they come and defend so then we want to attack the pawn again with this pawn it's not saying this is a standard approach that I'm expecting anybody to take but the idea behind it is is to be attacking pieces as best possible if you get the opportunity so say they capture and we capture back say they capture queen captures and then they develop their knight because they're now starting to attack always remember this is what the opponent is also going to be doing to yourself so develop the bishop now attacking this weak pawn here ordinarily maybe they open here castling is key get your king to safety whether it's a castling in normal stream of things or if it's castling by hand or virtual castling or you're putting your pieces around the king placing it to a place where you believe it is safe then do just do it yeah as simple as that develop the bishop now ready for their own castling we attack their knight they castle we develop our knight supporting the pawn here they attack our bishop we maybe capture they capture back that type of scenario and at this point here we could attack the knight with the smaller piece a smaller piece attacking a higher piece usually isn't that wrong so we can capture here we could capture the pawn back with the queen or we could take the big guns off the board now that's a choice that you would have to make in your game are you comfortable capturing the pawn here knowing that the queen is owning the file yes we can put pressure with our rooks so capturing the pawn here with the queen queen probably may want to move off of the line because it knows the rooks are going to attack it maybe they don't the knight probably may come here to attack a higher piece which is the queen so the bishop probably takes because it's attacking the queen higher piece maybe the knight takes or maybe the queen takes maybe the knight takes takes back then the rook takes so that's a typical sort of type of thing that we're looking at in terms of attacking pieces and uh, attacking squares and developing so let's make it work for us the strategy for beginning in chess so blocking the pawn from advancing further down and it's opened up the king side pawn area so as a beginner what I would say is don't focus on trying to keep any type of tension if they're giving you something just take it so we'll take the pawn here have a look at what attempt they're trying to make so the pawn trying to push through the center develop a piece attacking a piece here so the knight is attacking this pawn so if you can develop a piece that's attacking a piece as a beginner um, then you're understanding the rudiments of the game and what the pieces are there for so don't think about keeping tension and being fancy and arty and um, I'm attacking this piece here with this bishop you won't be able to attack all the time you have to look at king safety as well so in my eyes now king safety is developing this bishop here to allow my king to go and castle so we can go and castle now to keep the king safe key element to chess is keeping your king safe if you can't castle then castle by hand keep it safe no matter how it works out that's the whole idea or else if you're not keeping your king safe then you're getting checkmated and that's the game over with so what we're looking at here we've got one piece which is attacking a piece here we've got another piece which is attacking a smaller piece so it's an equal exchange here with the bishop and a knight attacking a pawn it's not for free he's now doubly protecting this pawn so we can now look to develop our own piece or we could attack this pawn here 
now this pawn can drop down so we do have that option so initially I'm going to develop the knight so I've developed my pieces trying to look at squares where they potentially may have strength so if he does push this pawn down he does have one two two pieces three pieces protecting that black square as we mentioned he's just going to drop yeah because he's got all these pieces protecting that square if we captured this knight the queen or the rook will take or maybe even the pawn because behind that knight is the queen so in, es in essence we could take this knight off because he has to do something to basically deal with the threat of the bishop attacking the queen then we can take this pawn maybe yeah so then do does he take with the pawn or does he take with the bishop likelihood is that he will take with the pawn so his pawn then is going to be on our knight so where does our knight go our knight would logically go here to attack a piece so it could work that way could take now because as we mentioned the bishop has the knight pinned through to the queen so there's an x-ray so he only really has two pieces defending this pawn so as we said this pawn is probably going to take then our knight can come here to attack their bishop I think their bishop will potentially go back so we'll move the knight like we said if they go back then the pawn takes doubling the pawns up in front of their king so he's not probably going to be happy with that going here is not really good either because the knight is the one that is protecting so our bishop would be able to take so it's almost inclined to either drop back here or drop back there which they don't really want to do oh now he's gone for a big attack now do you see this when you see this type of movement done when the queen takes then the knight comes here because now the knight has then put a check on the king yeah but then our bishop can take the knight but his queen can take our bishop yeah and then our bishop can take his bishop but his queen can take our knight so who wins out in that yeah we're going to give it a try let's go so king takes the bishop knight drops here bishop takes it's a move order thing and I'm not saying I'm 100% proof on, on any of it it's just when they give up a piece sometimes it ends up being equal or they're a pawn down something like that so I'm hoping that, that it works out that way so his queen then takes our bishop so he'll probably, have, probably take with the rook but we could take with our knight So his rook can still probably take, bishop takes, or he brings his queen to, he's trying to get his queen to face our king, you see. So if we have a look at the position, well, the pieces that we've got at the moment, we have one, two, three, three minor pieces, and the opponent has one minor piece left after that exchange. So like I say, sometimes it works for the opponents, and sometimes it doesn't it's a move order thing so you have to be careful about sacrificing pieces um, I'm not saying that this isn't going to work for the opponent because they're still around our king area with a strong piece which is the queen and if you have an opponent who goes well a rook is a rook I'm just going to exchange off then you know they've reduced down and they might be in a better position on the board but keeping it simple for ourselves as beginners for this festive season capture pieces where you can so he's developed the knight now attacking the bishop so he's got two pieces now on this bishop yeah so he's not going to take with the queen just yet but he could do because it's the queen that's protecting here our knight could go here but the queen would take we could support the port the bishop with a pawn 
his poem takes, our poem takes again and we're opening up space around our king area. Our knight could take this pawn here, but then his queen is just going to take the um, and then the rook takes our rook. Yeah, so those are the quiz quizzical things of him trying to get this piece back. So we could bring our knight back here, adding a protective layer to the bishop, but it weakens this area because the knight was actually protecting this square. So the queen is probably going to come here to put a check on the king. So our king can move back, but then potentially the rook is looking to come eventually, maybe. It, that's a lot of moves, we'll see how that goes. But that's the key square for now. Queen moves here for a check, we move the king back, and we have to look and assess where we're going with that. Let's bring in the rook there first. Right, okay. So yeah, so he comes here, like I said, that's the key, key square. So we could move the king. But when we move the king, what happens? His queen moves here. Yeah, so condensing the whole area with his pieces. And then he can just basically attack and get a checkmate. Okay, so we could move back, move the knight back, but as we said, the knight is probably going to take. Could push this pawn onto the um, knight and the queen to give them something to think about, but he can still go ahead with his rook check and he wins the tempo. Mm -hmm. And even then, we come here, he's then still got this position. So, what we do have is a bishop here, moving to here, if that does happen. Okay, so we can move here. Yeah, let's, if we move there, then they move there, then we moved here. And his knight's looking to do something funky with a check on my king. The pawn can't take it back because he's got a check with the queen. The knight can take. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see how it pans out. That's the pressure area. Yep, yeah. we do have the bishop being able to protect here. Okay, so time's running down on that side. So it's just about thinking about what, like we mentioned, yes, they've done a sacrifice and it's opened up a little bit of space around our king area, but it is a move order thing in terms of how they actually get the checkmate position on. And once you try and work that out as best possible, take that extra time to just think about how can they possibly get the checkmate and how can I then block that off? Because sometimes it's so easy to think, oh, I've got all these pieces off, and then you start charging up there thinking that you're going to get a checkmate, but then, because they've got lesser pieces on the board, you're thinking they can't do anything. But, case in point, this is how this poor person is going to get a checkmate on us, and we're trying to prevent that action. Could move his queen down, but we can still move the bishop here. I think that's a plus. Yes, yeah, so he's moved the queen. So we move the bishop back now, strengthening a little bit our position. We do have a little tiny pawn that can touch here, but if his rook comes here, we're not going to do that. If his knight rook moves, the knight will probably go here because then we have a fork. So I think that might be it. And Knight can grab this pawn, but that will be after if the rook comes here feeling confident. He's wanting to do something with this knight. He's believing this knight is going to come in and cause some damage. Some 51 seconds at the minute. So the knight has actually moved. So our knight can come here attacking his rook. 
our queen can go and attack his queen. Our knight can take the pawn attacking the rook. Knight takes the pawn attacking the rook, the rook comes here, he's attacking both our knights. So, attacking a higher piece is probably better, which is attacking the queen. I'm going to attack the queen to try and reduce down. Where can his queen go? Can go, can go, but it'll get taken, so it can go up or can go here to escape. If they were going to escape. He's got a 2 on 1, have you noticed, with his rook? Yeah, and his knight. So he does capture. So the bishop can take, or the knight can take. The knight would be on the rook, so it's forcing the rook to either take the pawn. So we're on 49 seconds at the moment. And he doesn't take, so his knight is on the bishop. Knight hasn't got a fork, so we'll take with a check on the king. And then capture the knight with attack on the pawn. It's got five seconds left, so we're not doing too bad in terms of the capturing and and they've lost on time. So we'll have a look at the analysis on that to see how we were faring. Okay, like we said, this is the tutorial for beginners in chess and going to work through it nice and steadily. So the opponent opened, we blocked the pawn off like we said, keeping it nice and simple and in our own strategy it's about taking pieces off the board appropriately. Uh, that will be our first stage thing just to practice what the pieces can actually do. So we've captured this pawn here, you don't have to capture it going forward as you develop but let's just look at just taking pieces off the board initially. Also, we looked at blocking off pieces, you know, understanding that we're blocking pieces off, but also giving our other pieces um, space to actually maneuver. So this pawn here is basically blocking the advancement of this pawn, which helps us develop our other pieces, such as the knight. So the knight now has come through and is attacking this pawn here that doesn't have any protection on it. And then we brought the bishop through, attacking a piece, x-raying through to a higher piece. We developed the bishop now because we said king safety is paramount in the game of chess. So no matter what you do on the board, if your king isn't safe, then you're going to lose the game and you're going to get checkmated. So we castled. And we developed our knight. Yeah, as you can see the evaluation bar, when you're looking back on your games, you'll, you'll have the fright of your life, you'll say, oh my god, I'm actually losing, I'm losing, is there a better way? Take it with a pinch of salt in terms of your own development as a beginner. Yeah, just use the basic strategy of placing your pieces in squares that you can potentially attack a piece or capture a piece and you're not going to be um, worse off for capturing that piece. So as we mentioned, this uh, the opponent was going to push through with this pawn and we worked out that potentially grabbing the pawn is going to be in a better position for us. So they captured and then we attached the bishop. Yeah, like we said, try and get your pieces attacking pieces, attacking key squares as best possible. And then the opponent did this shocking move. And we talked it through and said, well, is this one of those where they actually lose out on tempo in move order, depending on how you play it? We captured the bishop. And as the computer is showing, um, potentially they're probably better off moving the bishop out of the way. But they brought their knight into the game because then they've got two pieces under attack. So we can capture one, it's about move order, and now the computer's saying capture the bishop, yeah, which they do, but then we've captured another piece out of that exchange and we're still protected. Now we did mention about the rook potentially taking the knight here, the computer initially just did that, but then it's now pushing the pawn down onto the bishop. 
because it wants to get pieces back so as you can see the gauge bar now is really shining for us so we've done we've done it right as far as we're concerned but our issue was understanding how can they get a checkmate on us from this position and we talked through all the lovely positions that the opponent was going to go for so we brought our knight back initially to protect the bishop and they brought the rook down and that's where we went mm, this is how they're going to get the checkmate but after a long long talk and a long long discussion with ourselves we realized that moving the bishop back onto h6 would help us block off that immediate threat so we push through initially just to attack a higher piece with a lesser piece so we've got a fork with the pawn and then they came down with the queen same move the king here but we decided to move with the bishop we haven't lost anything on the evaluation side so again it's blocking off the potential threats and attacks that the opponent potentially can do to us they move the knight and we went for the exchange yep looking for those key exchanges those key captures and captured with the knight putting pressure onto the rook as i said i think the rook probably should have taken but they took with the knight and then we had a check on the king so they have to move it's again winning that move order so then we capture the knight and that's when their time ran out so basics for chess beginners capture when you can place your pieces on squares or, or places where you can potentially capture a piece or x-ray through to a higher piece a smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong initially when you're learning how to play chess so a pawn attacking a knight a pawn attacking a bishop a pawn attacking a rook or a queen it can't be wrong get used to that so long as that pawn then can't just be simply captured back and it is supported then it's a good attack fill up the knight out could protect the pawn just bring the knight out see he's developing let's go here and here king safety develop the bishop and he's moved this bishop back so we've got plenty of time just to uh, analyze what is actually happening here maybe let's just do a small move looking for the pawn to attack the bishop here okay let's attack and he's gone hiding let's um, scud missile capture this center pawn it's knights on there knights on there bishops here bishop can take this um, dolphin fin but not just yet let's keep pushing the scud missile lazy man's chest yes I'm being a lazy man so he's blocked it off now let's just attack this pawn here he's got a 2 on 1 with the bishop and the rook anyway so he'll get the pawn back if he does capture does capture with the bishop he's got the queen there so we can't actually take with the rook we can if we don't like our rook so I'm actually going to take piece for a piece Queen takes, knight takes, bishop got a bit of a discover check on the queen. So I'm just playing a bit of funky moves here now, doing the unexpected to try and gain the expected. If he doesn't, then knight takes the knight with a check on the king, opens up the king area a bit, something to think about. Queen can just take the pawn, he's not taking the pawn. Oh, well, so he's got a 2 on 1 on the knight, so we may as well just take the knight. Yeah, okay, so that looks fine to us. Let's just take this pawn. Bishop's looking for a little discovered check on the king here with a 2 on 1. 
it's got the rook there as well but it's a lesser piece attacking so he may want to get his knight or maybe he's, he's brought his knight in let's just go here this rook will probably take so it's yeah it's taken so let's get the pieces off the board and bishop here attacking the crew to the rook so it's been a bit of a messy game could have actually put a fork here yeah if i'd have uh, played my cards right So that might have been a missed opportunity, moving too fast. Yeah, so he's moved out of the way of the fork now. So let's go here. His bishop's coming down here, but we still got our bishop here, so at this moment in time it's not looking too bad. Knight will just go. Oh, he's gone there. Okay, fair enough. So what do we have in terms of growth? Let's uh, attack the knight. Could have brought the rook through here as well. I'm missing loads of opportunities here. And so his bishop's now attacking us, so we could just bring the bishop back. But then his knight is now protecting that square. Let's just grab. Okay, so they're up material in terms of minor piece and that type of stuff. Just bring the queen out. So a quirky little bit of opening, we probably shouldn't have done it, but it's not, I think it's nice to practice weird stuff sometimes because it does get the shock factor in there. Probably messed up, messed up a little bit, um, going for too much quirk um, later on in the game. But not going to lose too much sleep over it, it's not, not been too bad. Okay, so this Queen is obviously looking to angle to come down towards our, let's just push this pawn. So we've got plenty of minutes, so just push the pawn onto the knight, small piece attacking a higher piece. Okay, so it's having to run. If we push here, the queen is protecting this pawn at the minute. If they forget themselves, we can take the queen if he takes the pawn. But he looks like a, a deep thinker, so I don't think he's going to be doing any of that. <laughs> His title is wannabe GM, so <laughs> he's attacking our queen, so let's condense his queen in a little bit. Just drop back down again yeah that's fine and we don't really have anything you know we're just gonna mo try and mosey him up so the seconds are running down but they've still got plenty of time to do some serious damage he's attacking our queen area uh, let's just bring this pawn here supporting He's blocked his rook. Is there some danger with them blocking the rook like that? His queen is going to come round, put some checks on our king, but that might be a bit late. Uh, da, 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 he's defending the pawn. It's an interesting situation. Let's go here. His knight's going to get a fork, isn't it? Somehow. Some way. Queen is going to come for this pawn here, and he's still he's defending the knight. His pawns want to be pushed past pawns. Put a bit of pressure on his game. Uh, da, 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 while I'm thinking, so that's like scud missile stuff. When you got a pass pawn, it's like just do a scud missile, get it as far up the board as you can. Yes, yeah, so he's having to think about. If I push it then, then his knight's just going to take, so if I bring the rook here, maybe take the knight off, but his knight's going to move and get a fork on me, please don't. He's, uh, he's defending, so the rook can take, but then his queen takes. So there's not a right lot really to do, so what's happening on this area here, pawn up, pawn takes. Rook takes, pawn takes. Um, what do we want to do? I don't know why I'm doing that move. It just feels like a suffocated move, but it's not really doing anything. Dun, 
dun, dun. So it's like what we were saying, we've got a good missile and potentially it's going up there to try and promote. So our opponent's trying to block it off. But in real terms, they've got more material, so they could be looking to come round the back like he's attempting to do now, it looks like. Uh, I really don't know. Let's um, go here. They're on 34 seconds. Can't really see any patterns per se. He's going for exchanging. If he exchanges, does that? Let's just exchange. Bring the rook across, maybe. Still keep pushing. That gives them something to worry about. But has he got a fork on my king and my rook? I don't have no His rook can't go back to defend now, so he probably can bring his rook here. We take, but then his knight can't. I suppose. Well, let's put a check. And are we running out of time here? So we got a queen out of this um, funky looking situation. Let's bring that back. We don't need to do anything grandiose. Let's attack the rook. Let's take the rook. Take the knight. Take the pawn, grab, push. He's only got one second left. He's not going to get there in time to do anything. Okay, so we win time out. So the quirky opening worked after all, strange as it may seem. Simple is as simple does. Just capture, capture, attack, attack, attack. Just keep attacking, attack the queen. This is a much higher rated player, so just we're going to try and use the, the example that was saying basically about attacking, attacking, attacking where possible, and it does happen even against higher rated players. So, castle for king safety, keeping the king safe, attacking the knight, just keeping it simple, not thinking of any fancy tactics. Bring the bishop here, we've seen this before because the knight is looking to attack this pawn here and put pressure on the rook um, this knight wants to come through so let's just develop this pawn a little bit give our bishop some breathing space knights come through attacking our knight wants our knight in the centre we can well we can leave it there or we can capture the knight or we can move the knight sometimes we don't want to do what they want us to do so let's bring the knight across And that's not trying to be fancy, it's just he's wanting to basically exchange that off. Yes, sometimes it is a good thing to take, you know, if they give it to you, just take it. But sometimes if your position isn't going to be right, there's no point in actually doing that. It would have been more benefit for them. See now, look how he's manoeuvring his pieces. So... His knight wants to come here, but he can't, so if we push this pawn, smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong. So let's go with that. And this is against a higher person, so now he wants to get rid of our knight, but I'm glad to get rid of it now at this point. Doubles his pawns up, so pleased with that. Dark square bishop can come out and develop a little bit, maybe to here. Sort of this square. This rook is going to take the pawn here. So we'll look to exchange the rooks off. He's not actually done that. So we'll bring our rook here to defend this pawn. He's got a two on one here. So got to be careful there. Knight can come and attack this bishop. Because we've got support from the bishop here. Rook's not going to take. But again, it, like in our example, we, we you can do some very strange openings and win let's take the bishop off the board brings his pawns back in line but I'm not too bothered about that let's attack his um, rook so the principle does work against higher higher level players as well so it's always this is what makes me confident about the idea of as a beginner just simply just attack 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 get used to what the pieces can do and then 
chalk it up as a, a good experience uh, going forward so so tack this pawn because it's got no protection on it at the moment still got a long way to go time wise and he's pushing down with the scud missile so, um, do we want to block the scud missile off or do we want to grab this pawn this pawn comes down we push up I, th I think we can grab this pawn I think don't want to lose tempo so, yeah, so he's come with the scud so push up so we need to probably get our king just moving slightly across so we don't get any into any sort of trap positions that's a nice fork if we could get our rook across here I'm going to move the rook it's an obvious move but um, sometimes the obvious stuff catches people out even the higher rated players so he has moved gives us time to move our pawn up slightly they're on two minutes at the minute they're thinking so we can bring our bishop here but it opens up our king area though so maybe we don't want to do that could bring the pawn bishop here but then his pawn pushes down onto it so could come here could come there let's go here I think his bishop is going to move because his rook is going to want this pawn his bishop may be coming here nope okay so let's push this pawn so that there's no more problems on that side and he's now looking to open up that space so let's attack his rook because his rook is looking happy there and then when he moves a discovered check on his other rook should help So even if I lose this type of game, I'm not bothered because I'm playing, uh, I feel, some nice solid game of chess. If we go here, his bishop's going to come and put a check on us, so we just need to move out of the way, maybe onto the white square here. He's not doing that just yet, he's looking to condense us down a little bit. And he's moved himself off of the um, pin type thing. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, can still go here. I think the bishop is still going to put the check on the king. Won't preempt it just yet. So he's not doing any of that just yet. So the bishop can attack his rook. Is the time running out here? Let's just double the rooks up for now. We're still expecting the bishop to put the check on the king, so we do have the space to do that. Our bishops are all together, so his rook could actually lean onto these rook, our bishops. So he might actually win those bishops. Ooh, dark times. If they go there, one of the bishops can attack the rook type situation, so that's not too bad. So they're putting a lot of thought into these moves. Higher rated player, I'm pleased with what we've done. Oh, he's not actually done any of those. Bishop can attack his rook, his rook moves to here, then he's got a 2 on 1 there, so are we just going to look for a simple exchange? Don't want to over complicate it. So like we said he was going to attack these bishops and uh, didn't really want it that way but <coughs> Let's see, so if we can come here, we take the bishop. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't think we've done that right. We're losing time now as well. Eek, ak, ook, 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 ook. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's take the knight. It's a piece for a piece. If his rook takes, if he doesn't, then we've got space to bring the bishop back. Time, sorry. Yep, so he does take, so we've got time to bring the bishop back to here. And I think we've got space to still do the doubling up of the rooks, attacking the king area, so I think the king is going to look for safety here. And we've got a white square bishop, so that's not going to be too much good for us on that side. He's gone for a take. Oh. Ah, da 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 if we grab 
then this pawn is going to come down and wreak havoc. Yeah, let's go here. I'm going to have to sacrifice my bishop, I think. But even then, he, oh, he's got a checkmate on me. Slow death. Mm, 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 mm. Don't panic, though, don't panic. Okay, I'm going to have to retreat. I think that's the best option, just retreat and get all my pieces helping my king. So we do have an extra piece, maybe, <coughs> maybe we can make that work for us. Let's move this king. What can this bishop do? Uh, can't do that, can I? Let's go here. Sort of trying to fashion coming here to come here, but then that might not work either. Yes, yeah, so it's doubled here. Let's go here. Here. Yeah. Let's go there. Now he's trying to flag me in a sense because we're all we're both on thirty odd seconds. Um. Check on the king. Let's support this pawn. I'm not going to try and go for any checkmates unless he gives it to me on the plate. 19 seconds. It's going to capture. And just nice and steady, just here. 17 seconds. Let's go there. Let's move this rook out of the way of any checks. Let's see if he wants to play a ball. No, let's grab this. Let's grab that with a check. Let's put a check here. Eight seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh. Black timed out, white wins! <gasps> That's a lovely example, playing a higher rated player. Yeah, they're 400 points higher than myself and basically that's the type of example that I'm trying to put through in the um, seasonal tutorial for beginners. Attack, attack, attack and then obviously once the situation gets to a stage whereby yes you have an advantage but then if you go for the checkmate, you're actually going to lose. This case in point, this opponent had a pawn that was um, highly advanced down the board, but time-wise, there was no way that they were going to get it um, promoted because we brought our pieces back to protect the king area, keeping it as simple as possible. Okay, so we're going to block off like we've done previously with the pawn. Queen's now attacking this key square here, so we're going to develop the knight to block the queen from actually attacking this pawn. Bishop now is attacking this square with the queen. So now, basically, what we need to do is look at defending that area. So we just attack with a smaller piece. So a smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong. You can develop the knight to block or you can bring the queen through to exchange. We can bring the queen through just for a simple ex exchange. As beginners, let's try and go for exchanging similar types of pieces. And the opponent has actually done that, so we'll grab back with the knight. This pawn now is being attacked, but it's being defended by this knight. So we can look to defend ourselves by actually either attacking a piece or just simply defending and bringing the bishop through here. The knight is looking to jump into this square. I think we're just going to simply, as beginners, as we've mentioned, we may as well attack a piece. Let's attack a piece first rather than being fancy and doing the fianchetto. So again, 
we've got this opportunity to take a piece off the board we're doubling the, the opponent's pawns up as we speak we do have another opportunity to attack another piece so let's attack this piece with the knight so we're attacking the bishop so the whole idea about this basic tutorial for absolute beginners is just attack a piece if you can and take that piece off the board if it's safe to do so don't think about keeping any tension just get used to the idea of what pieces can attack so I'm going to attack with the smaller piece this pawn here attacking the bishop don't look at what grandmaster games and look at how they play and again we're going to attack this bishop again with a smaller piece only place that this bishop can go now is here so he'll un undouble his pawn but we're not interested in any of those fancy tactics we're just capturing a piece keeping it nice and simple we do have the opportunity now to go and castle to keep our king safe this dark square bishop potentially is coming here to attack so we could move our king here to prevent that attack so just keeping it simple he's now attacked our pawn so what we can do again is not get into a flap about it and just say to ourselves well what can we attack this rook can come and attack the knight so let's bring the rook and attack the knight this pawn here can attack this pawn potentially the pawn is going to drop but it's not so he's um, brought his um, pawn down so a smaller piece attacking a higher piece we can attack this knight but he wants to take this pawn so I'm going to just bring the bishop here to defend this pawn first so it's not always attack but it's also looking at what the opponent is trying to attack too our rook has got an x-ray through onto this pawn here if we get this pawn onto the knight then the knight has to move so then we would win the pawn back in a sense so we're going to attack it with a smaller piece so the knight has to move so the knight's moved attacking our our knight but we do have a tempo because we do get the pawn back so we can capture this pawn like we mentioned put in a check onto the king so the king has to move or the bishop comes in defense we then win the knight because we won the tempo because there's nothing supporting their knight so now potentially we're looking at doubling up the rook keeping it simple double the rooks up on the file to support each other keeps them fairly strong so we can now look to attack this bishop by pushing this smaller piece up so it can move two squares up on the first move the bishop potentially is going to come back here to support the rook but because we have more material on the board we can capture and take pieces off the board and that's the whole idea so now we can capture this bishop because he only has one piece protecting which is the rook so then we can capture the rook and keeping that simple putting pressure onto this pawn and they've resigned let's have a look at the analysis on that one that was a pretty quick game but it's using the principles that we're talking about in terms of as a beginner keep things simple pushing the pawn to block the advancement of the pawn the queen has come down attacking the weak square in front of the king developing the knight to protect this um, pawn bishops now attacking the weak square even more and a smaller piece attacking a higher piece which is the queen and then looking for the exchange with the queen if you get opportunity to exchange as a beginner exchange the same sort of um, strength piece then do so leave the tension stuff until later on in the games when you're developing your strategies even more so they capture and we capture back and we debated about doing a fianchetto bringing the bishop in front here towards the knight but because as we're learning the game let's utilize the power of the pieces that we've got so we're attacking the knight and we take the knight off the board no messing about and we attack their bishop and attack the bishop again and again and again 
So these types of um, psychologies, these types of strategies do actually upset higher rated players as well as lower rated players because it is simple. And we castle for king safety, very paramount king safety. If your king isn't safe, you are going to get checkmated. So as we're human, we wanted to prevent the bishop from coming to attack our rook, so we went there, but then the opponent attacked the pawn. Now, I know in cases such as these, uh, lower rated players will have a panic attack and think, oh no, I've lost a pawn, I'm a pawn down. But as we discussed through the game, it's about looking at getting the better position. And as we discussed, we had the knight and the rook attacking this particular area here. His knight wanted to take this pawn, so if we pushed onto this uh, knight, he would have ca captured this pawn as well. So we made the correct decision by actually supporting the pawn first with the bishop. And then we could put pressure onto the knight. The knight then came and attacked our knight, which is a nice move, it's um, using the principle of attacking a piece. but. It's at the expense of losing tempo and when you do get a check on a king you actually win a tempo because they have to do something to actually protect that king and if they've attacked you but their other piece hasn't got any protection on you can freely take it so now we're up a minor piece and simple is as simple does rooks on open files if you can get your rooks on open files supporting each other then it's a fairly strong power base for you to get an advantage in the game so we start pushing towards the dark square bishop now with a smaller pawn and the opponent released the pressure this pawn was actually protecting let's just go back one yep so he had a two on one protection so that protection potentially should have been maintained but as soon as they release that then we have like a two on one and at that point there because we're up um, material and it was going to be a bit of a struggle for white to maintain um, a semblance in the game so again as the seasonal video for um, beginners in chess it's about attacking and capturing pieces that you can, attacking key spaces, key squares and basically the smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong so, so long as that smaller piece cannot be taken for free. You can set pieces up to actually get captured so that then you're in a better position but don't lose faith if you actually miss an attack that the opponent has actually taken of yours so if they've taken a free pawn as we mentioned here with the knight just uh, wick back a bit yep don't lose faith have a look at the board have a look at the position what is the actual a threat from the opponent just because they've won that pawn are they actually in a better position To look at time management but try not miss stuff I'm going to try and keep it as basic as possible just push here right king safety castle and he's looking to blast through uh, attack the bishop capture keep it simple I've got no time to um, look at uh, complicated lines or anything. Uh, let's go here. A bishop takes, queen takes, rooks on the pawn, he's going to defend the pawn. No, he's not, so let's grab. And let's uh, support. If they forget themselves and leave themselves like that, we grab the rook. that position in the uh, beginners castle queen well sorry check on the king rook can't come down there let's go here 
knight here. Queen can come across, but uh, I'm overthinking. I think I'm just going to do something desperate here. Looking for the exchange of the queen. Yeah, let's just get that off. Let's just push through. So we don't really need to rush to try and go and get a checkmate. That's the thing. You know, we can just move our pieces around now. Okay, so his knight's looking for this pawn down the bottom. It's not doing much protection for this pawn here. Then if he grabs it, let's go here. So he's looking at whipping off loads of pawns all over the place. Yeah. Okay, let's just go here. It's not going to be getting like a checkmate thing or anything. It's uh, it's not worth doing it. Um, let's go here. Grab this pawn. So let's go here. He's looking for a magic fork. It's protecting there. Let's go with a check. Comes down for the knight. And let's go for a magic fork ourselves. Let's grab here. Let's just block the king off. Let's move our king up. Move the king up. Grab. Move the king out of the way. Let's push upon. And let's just start moving across. Fast. And checkmate. Keep it simple. I'm going to develop the knight attacking this pawn here. It's got no protection on. We could attack it. But he could attack back and then his knight would be on this pawn here. So you see how he's got a two on one with the potential for the knight if he came here so we're going to just advance our knight through protecting the pawn at the moment okay so that's nice steady development so in in those terms there it is a small element of keeping tension but we don't have a clear attack that keeps us safe so I'm going to develop my bishop now defending my knight from the potential attack from the bishop coming here we could have brought our bishop to this square here attacking the weak oh that must be a mouse slip that must have been a mouse slip okay so we're going to go and castle anyway so i think they probably were going to castle there so he's going to have to castle by hand so they may have lost a bit of tempo so our bishop could come here to attack the knight but there's nothing behind the knight really that's forcing the knight to stay there so we could look to just develop our next piece so this is different to the first two games where we're not immediately attacking anything at the moment but we're positioning our pieces safely this pawn is protecting this pawn the knight is protecting that pawn our bishop potentially is looking to come and start attacking this bishop here but our opponent wants his knight to come into here potentially so when you see these pawns pushing down here I call these scud missiles sometimes you can ignore them sometimes not so much because what they do is I call it lazy man's chess yeah they just push 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 and then eventually the pawn ends up here and then you're, you're scrabbling around trying to find find out how to uh, get rid of it so I'm going to block the pawn and keeping it simple if you ever see somebody pushing like the H or the A pawn just block the pawn from coming any further down the board it's called lazy man's chest in my eyes it's like well okay I can't think of anything else so I'm gonna push down the side there and it does work if they put their pieces together you know correctly um, so going to bring the knight around now because we're going to attack the bishop and we're attacking it three times one with the knight and twice with the bishop and the queen okay so we could take with the knight 
or take with the queen I'm going to take with the queen if we take with the knight it releases this pawn here to be able to do some attacks up on this side that's an interesting one but at the minute my queen is all blocked in so I think I want to get my queen a little bit active so we capture so now their queen see where the queen has gone there's a diagonal all the way through yep towards our king area we wanted our bishop to be attacking their bishop his knight wants to jump here to attack our queen I like the pawn pushing here on the F but the bishop has got the pin through to our king so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack the bishop but I believe the knight is going to come through here to attack our queen what do we do from there? We do have options of moving the queen slightly here. But it's not doing that. Because behind, if our knight takes this knight, his pawn takes, and then his rook has got pressure on this pawn here. Is that something that we want? I'm actually going to take the bishop, capture when you've got so many options to choose from it's probably safer to go with your, your initial gut feeling that is not going to put pressure around your king area initially this pawn doesn't have any protection on it at the moment we could attack his knight to say well what is it you're actually wanting to do so a smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong because what we really don't want to do is open up this pawn so that his rook is then pressuring our king area so he does capture, so we can capture here. His queen still has the diagonal towards our king area, but we've got the pawn protecting here, the pawn protecting there. So now his king has had to come out into the open. Our knight can actually put a check on, without too much discussion, onto the king. Potentially looking to push forward with the pawn here to make space for the rook, so that we can maybe double the rooks up. So hopefully you can see how we've got to this stage so far. This king's gone back so it does give us a bit of tempo to move the pawn up. Conscious that if we do move the pawn up we're leaving the space here for his queen to come here attack our queen. If our queen takes, his pawn takes, we suppose we can push the pawn up. So I'm actually going to push the pawn through like we discussed. His knight is still chomping at the bit to come and put a check on our king here. So that's a nice key square for his knight. So he wins a bit of a tempo in terms of being able to do that. Move the king or queen across a little bit, keeping protection of this pawn. So he's not gone there just yet. Our knight could take the pawn, but I really want to get my rooks doubled up. Got to make sure that there's no fork with this deadly knight and the knight has come in eventually so we can move the queen across like we mentioned so if we move it across so that he's not attacking well not going to capture this pawn does he have a magical fork anyway yeah he's now challenging the rook okay so we can move the rook up or just move it back down again but then he can just keep challenging so I'm going to bring the rook here so it still gives us space to bring, bring our rook here to get a doubling on this pawn area smaller piece attacking a higher piece so he's attacking our knight now so we can bring our knight around attacking his piece as you can see we're still following this process of basic attacking of pieces that's the whole idea behind this tutorial of attacking pieces attacking key squares and not playing around with keeping the tension there's there's a right way to do the tension and the wrong way to do the tension so his knight has come down so we can double the rooks in readiness for attacking this weak area. Yeah, so earlier we kept the tension because we didn't want this pawn coming through. Now he snuck his queen through into the uh, lion's den. So what is he trying to do with this queen? His queen can take this pawn with a check on our king. If we bring the pawn up here to support, then his queen can no longer do that. He can't come in here because the king is there. 
His knight can jump here, but our rook can take. So I think pushing the pawn here seems to be an appropriate action. So always be mindful of what it is that the opponent is trying to do. That is the key thing. And then block it off. And then continue your attack if it's fruitful for you. But if your opponent is doing multiple attacks, you have to do multiple defences. It's as simple as that. So a smaller piece attacking a higher piece. Can't be wrong. It's where this knight is planning to go. Let's go here. If he does come down, our knight can take. If he goes across, the pawn can take. So it's potentially... He's going for the exchange, which is, I suppose, okay for us in a sense. So we're going to capture, attacking his rook at the same time. Now our rooks have this open file here. So we have options. We can go for an exchange or we can put pressure on his queen to say, what do you actually want to do? We can come up here to attack these pawns. But because his queen is so advanced around our king area, I'm a little bit concerned. So I'm going to put pressure on their king queen. Keeping it simple, attacking a higher piece with a lesser piece. It's not too bad because the king, their king, hasn't got any um, protection at the moment. But we have to jostle this position now. Okay, so we're down to one minute, so they'll be looking maybe to try and win on time. That is a strategy in its own right and let's see what does our queen want to do if our queen comes here then we have and his rook takes this pawn then we have this type of attack on his king area and he's not wearing any of that but we can still attack the king here so the king is looking to get to safety so it's like castling by hand in a sense you know so he gets to safety here so what do, ooh, it's not gone there. So we can put a check on with our queen. And where does he go? Oh, he has to block down. Well, so now this is where the tricky bits come in. Because we're going to look like we're going to have to exchange the queens. Okay, so positionally it doesn't look too bad, but when you can't, I'm only on 32 seconds as well. Hey, we could develop the pawn. Let's just develop the rook. So I'm going to have to move fairly quick now. So I'm, I probably won't be able to talk through any of the moves now. So I'll put a check, mate. <laughs> so, okay, let's have a look at the analysis on that one. Right, so again, this is the Christmas special, the tutorial. Basically, just having... A look at the strategy the one strategy which is to attack when possible attack when possible and block your opponent's attacks when possible so the bishop came through we attacked the pawn we didn't take the pawn because they had multiple potential attacks on our pieces Yep, so if our knight had captured here, then his knight could have captured here, then he would have a pressure here from his bishop and the knight. So it's actually capturing when it's appropriate. Hello, I'm just um, doing a vid. It's uh, capturing when it's appropriate and, and safe to do so. So then we develop the bishop coming through. And I think this may have been a mouse slip from the opponent on this side here. I think they potentially went for castling. But it does happen. Uh, so it, it happens in real life over the board games as well. So they developed the knight. And like I said, this game was different to the first two where we had the opportunity to capture pieces early on. In this one, it was a matter of protecting our pieces so that we could position our pieces to attack the, the opponent's pieces and case in point the lazy man's chest here when you see the scud missiles coming down on the h file or the a file take some consideration into blocking them off as best possible sometimes you can leave them 
more times with as a beginner I would say just block it off for now until you feel comfortable about letting them come down further and further so then they developed their bishop but then we had three pieces attacking this piece we have the bishop and we have the queen so then they captured so then we developed our piece and we attacked the bishop like we said earlier and then they gave us a combination attack and like we discussed we didn't want this pawn being able to come here because then the rook would be having space around our king area and then the development of their queen would be fairly strong yeah depending on how they worked it so if you've got the opportunity to exchange exchange away from the potential threat especially around opening space around your king area so attacking a higher piece with a smaller piece can't be wrong so we captured the knight and then attacked the king with the knight putting a check on and now we're looking to try and open space on this uh, e file f file so the knight comes through eventually we did say the knight did want to come here so we were always aware that that was potentially going to happen and the queen was going to protect the pawn bringing the rook down but keeping enough space so that we could double the rooks and the queen coming down here looks fairly devastating but having a look at what it is that they're trying to attempt to do then you can block it off and then we attack the knight then attack the knight again making space now for our rooks to work on the f file but initially we're looking at well what is this queen actually wanting to do so putting pressure on it and now tripling up almost like an alakine's gun and putting pressure onto the king and then the king again and then the queen and then checkmate so keep it simple attack when you can block your opponent's attacks when you can and maneuver your pieces to save squares when you can
draw. Okay, continuing the tutorial for chess beginners, the Christmas special. So we've just attacked the pawn here, they've defended, so they spent a bit of energy defending there. We're going to attack his weak pawn here, supported by the king. And there's um, a nice maneuver that you can actually do, which is capturing this pawn here, because it puts a check on the king. And then the knight puts a check on the king, but then that's wrong, because this bishop was supposed to be supporting. So I've seen this movement done many times. <clears throat> yeah. So where the bishop takes, then they think that they can do that. But because this pawn isn't um, advanced, this bishop isn't supporting the knight, so you can't do that because the queen will take the knight. Yep. So now you have to fashion a different way of working. So working simply, attacking the piece, putting a check on the king now because they've captured back, and if we blast through to the center a little bit here, we're putting pressure on the king, slowly but surely, and this is how you sort of circumvent that type of practice or error, if you like. So the knights come down with ferocity, just bring the queen here, just protecting this pawn. Okay, we could capture the knight or we could bring the bishop back here just to attack the other knight. So regrouping is a key essential thing to learn in chess. Nothing is perfect. Smaller piece attacking a higher piece. It's always a crucial point to remember. Yes, we've made an error in this opening movement, but how can we regroup to make it better and stronger for us? King safety is a key thing. So we could look to go into castle. So always remember, yes, you are going to make a mistake in chess. If you're not willing to accept that you're going to make a mistake in chess, then chess might not be the right thing for you. So we're going to attack this pawn here, looking to attack the king area. Okay, so we're going to bring the rook into the game because it puts pressure on the knight so the knight can't move. The king's move now, he's had to do extra movements that he really didn't want to be making. Going to develop this knight now, okay, with all our pieces sort of focused towards the king area. Let's move this knight, his knight doesn't have any protection on it at the moment. But our rook can't go here because the bishop is actually attacking that area. So we do have options. We could leave the rook, rook there, the knight will take. Could bring the rook back so that the knight then takes back. Or bring the rook all the way back. Or we could just take the rook. Okay, so now, nice and simple, just develop the queen, looking for the rook to attack the queen, which is a higher piece. All the while we're focusing on the king area. Because just because the opponent has more material does not mean that they've won the game. You have to have the position to actually win the game. So his knight now is attacking a higher piece, which is our queen. Our queen can move two places, it can go here, it can go here, looking for the diagonal to put a check on the king here. So we'll do that because a single knight attack is not too scary, he's got his queen which is hitting here, he's got his knight which is there, but the king is also here and we've got the rook as well. So he'd have to develop his queen to get the third person which would be the rook. Yep, so a small move like the queen moving here going to here would work for them but what do we have we did have the check here but if his queen drops here which I think they will do that stops the check on the king we have the bishop taking this pawn here if he does do that and we have a pin a lovely pin on his king our queen can obviously take his knight if he does move his queen, so there's something to think about on that side. Yeah, so we do have that element there. So there's options. We've got this major attack here because we can't, his king can't move. He's actually sacrificed the knight. He's actually sacrificed the knight. The bishop can still take this pawn here, 
but obviously the queen is not going to take because the queen is protecting. So I'm going to actually capture the knight here. I'm a bit shocked at that particular move. So the knight can actually move back to whence it came or it can move here looking to come here to put a third, a third party onto that particular pawn. So I think we'll do that, bring this around, looking to bring the knight across here. We have this and he's again busy attacking our queen. So we do have the option again of here but the knight now can defend by going here but it's closing down and suffocating the king a little bit and blocking his queen's access. So we've actually clawed back the um, situation, it's moved the king. So we can actually take the knight. So we will take the knight with the um, queen. And the bishop now has got an x-ray through to our, our knight. So one of two things, let's see. Queen can't come here because the pawn will take. And the queen can't go here because, well it can go here but the queen takes. Well the bishop will take. So let's think that through. Queen cannot protect that knight somehow. So what pressure can we put on their king? That is what my thought process is thinking. If only the bishop could come here and then we would have a nice attack here but this queen is supporting. Is there anything else that we can attack? We could attack his queen, saving our, uh, but it's not saving really because if we go here, his bishop still will take the knight, then our queen takes his queen, his rook then still takes our queen. So then we're a rook and a bishop the same. So, time is running out, but you have to put some thought process into your movements. I am thinking attack, attack, attack or defense against the attack but I cannot defend this knight if my bishop went here his bishop would have to take the bishop that's no good I like to think of silly thoughts if we take the pawn then at least his bishop's taking the knight for I'm taking I've got a pawn and I've got another pawn here I think that's going to work. Let's grab this pawn. So we're capturing a piece. Two pawns for a minor piece. I think that's a good enough exchange. Mm -hmm. So we talked it through. So now we need to develop our pieces. He's got a nice position with his bishop. So I'm going to attack the queen. He's got the pawn here, sides with the rook. But in essence we've got two, two pawns extra so maybe we can dance a little bit with these pawns. I'm not sure that they're going to exchange the queen but they have done so we can capture. And then the rook will take this pawn here. So we have a dark square bishop. And we can capture this pawn on the far side. We have to be careful though because if you see his bishop can actually attack. His rook maybe can come across, but I think I'm going to take this pawn. Again, keeping it simple for the seasonal Christmas special. And he's not doing anything about that, so I'm going to bring my bishop back here. Looking for a discover check on his rook. So I'm going to push the pawn up, making him, hopefully hypnotizing him into the fact that, well, nothing's happening. And we can take the rook off the board with the bishop. Oh, and we have. So we can take the bishop off the board, the rook off the board. So we have several pawns, keeping it nice and simple. And time is running out. So if we can, let's see, what can we actually do? Push past pawns. And uh, just defend here. So looking at what the opponent's trying to do. And keep pushing. 56 seconds so I need to be a bit urgent now and keep pushing he's blocked his own dark square bishop in so let's keep going 53 seconds and we get a resignation let's have a look at the analysis board on that one see how we went on ok 
Okay, so let's get the evaluation tools. So we push through the center, attack to the pawn, and then attack to the weak pawn in front of the king. The opponent attacked us, and then as I've seen in many, many games um, at the lower rated level, basically this type of action is taken. Bishop taking the weak pawn, but not realizing that this, pot, this bishop doesn't have any protection for this particular knight. This pawn should have been moved first because then that supports the knight coming here, putting a check on the king if the king takes, as we mentioned in the game. So I said, well, okay, let's just regroup. And it's having that ability to regroup. Yes, you may make it, yeah, you will make mistakes in chess as you're developing throughout your game. I make mistakes all the time. And it's about trying to nullify those mistakes as best possible to make them l a lesser impact. But also what I've seen in my games and in other games that I've watched is how people come back from disadvantaged positions, disadvantaged material um, losses. So we now focused on what we're practicing, which is attacking with smaller pieces against higher pieces, capturing where we can, supporting pieces where we can, and opening up pieces to develop so that they can attack. So we attacked with the bishop because we were in a bad position at this moment in time in terms of material, but positionally, we were okay. There's a massive difference between having material but having a poor position. You could have 50 million pieces on the board, but if you're going to get checkmated in two moves, those pieces are no good. And that's the idea behind what I'm trying to explain here, is that as many pieces as you've got on the board, if they're not doing anything, then they're not worth anything on the, on the board. So they have to be doing something. So the knight attacks the queen. Yeah, a smaller piece attacking a higher piece. We bring the queen back. And they attack our bishop. We bring the bishop back, attacking the knight. Yeah, so that looks like that was the right move to make. That's all good. And it did suggest taking with the bishop, but I wanted to keep as many pieces on the board as I wanted, um, as far as I could see. So a smaller piece attacking a higher piece, I had no problems with that. King safety eventually so now the file on the F as far as I can see looks like we're going to own that file so we push through with our pawn attacking their pawn and that same take with the bishop but we wanted to maintain pressure on the king and the knight so the king moves so it's making them do moves they don't really want to do developing the knight through with a plan of moving towards the king area and you know, I don't think I saw this move. So the queen takes, and yes. See what I mean? I miss stuff. Look at that. Queen just taking the knight. So we worked really hard to try and get that knight back or, or any piece back, and we didn't even need to. Look at that, queen taking the knight. So we were so focused on owning the file to bring the rook here to put pressure on the queen, we forgot and oh, we didn't see a free knight here. Anyway, we'll continue on. This is showing you errors, mistakes happen in games, but it's not about losing faith. It's about, well, if you want to get better at chess, you have to learn to accept that you're going to make these mistakes. You're not going to see everything. But when you do your evaluation like this, then it makes you better because you're more aware and you start looking for these types of um, attacks and advantages. So the knight comes down and attacks, and we bring the queen up, which is showing us a slight advantage, which is good. So the knight is now sacrificed itself, and we captured with the knight. So sort of equalized in that sense. So it was probably two moves away from us actually being able to capture the knight, and then we grabbed the knight anyway. And now the gauge bar showing that we're more or less in a bit of an advantage. I bring the knight back. 
and then we go for a little check okay so when you do see the evaluation bar and you see the moves that it suggests you know and you think well why didn't I see that well you will do once you start to actually evaluating your games take if you're taking it serious and you want to get better you'll start seeing those better moves we went for a queen check on the king and then we captured the knight yep the knight could have gone and blocked but it didn't so we're showing a bit of an advantage there and then we can capture the pawn because two pawns for a minor piece is equal so now we're showing a bit of a bit of an advantage bring the queen back for the exchange capture just seeing if there's anything major we did capture the pawn we brought the bishop back is there any major dips from this point and we went for the discover check on the rug it's always nice to be able to do discover checks on pieces especially if it's a pawn move um, in the lower rated area when somebody does a pawn move they don't actually look at what that pawn move was they just see that it was a pawn move going forward and they don't see any potential attacks after that so it's something to be mindful of when you're making your own moves are you opening up space for the opponent to actually attack a piece of yours a major piece of yours by moving the pawn so this at this point here we just wanted to gravitate up and a small key point here the king move up here to protect the pawns again I've seen many cases where people will focus on just pushing the pawn up pushing the pawn up and miss a little bit of gold I'm not saying it would have been catastrophic if you didn't yeah so if we pushed up say and the king took yeah it just gives them a little bit of weight towards these two pawns that are linked but it's nothing major okay because if they carried on pushing yeah so let's say that's showing the bishop here saying the king here then obviously what well, if the bishop blocks it blocks so we've still got avenues to move around so it's a longer way of doing it a longer winded way of doing it and you don't want to allow these two pass pawns to actually start moving so in a nutshell that was um, a pretty good game to show the attacking attacking where necessary blocking where necessary looking at what the opponent's trying to attack defending where necessary if it's appropriate finding appropriate positions on the board and basically the strategy is just take pieces take pieces and take pieces but have a look at what you're trying to strategize if you're trying to strategize this is a key point just to if you're trying to strategize the bishop taking the pawn type situation and then you're looking at maybe the knight coming here always remember that the knight needs to be supported especially if the queen is there you know waiting to take it off the board yeah because it is a nice move but once you've established this type of thing yeah and obviously it's showing that's going to come into play here if it does do that if you wanted to try doing that yeah you can still try it because the king can take then the knight can go here with a check king move into here yeah but the queen is no longer going to take the bishop you know so how many pieces have they got one two three four and you've got one two three yeah so the whole idea is gone because the knight is there protecting the bishop so you've got to think ahead in a sense not too far ahead just think to yourself well if I do make that attacking move because I'm wanting to put a bit of style into my game what's the follow-up yeah is the knight working is that then gonna get me the bishop back that's too advanced so in my head I'm saying keep it simple attack where necessary a simple attack that gives you the benefit and the advantage if you're not um, able to accept losing then there's no point in actually playing chess because you are going to lose you know you're going to lose and um, it's how you then come back from that well this is a strange opening let's go here Well, yeah, um, you can improve on the way that you lose and uh, and then just develop and keep going until eventually you're losing less or 
you're not losing as ugly as you have lost before that type of situation so just be happy if you're developing at all within the game of ch um, chess Ooh, let's see bishop here this looks funky not happy with my knight being like this or anything this is odd it looks very strange oh it's still going to come down never mind we can take let's capture what do we have some sort of rhythm yeah, attack here who wants to own the file we do let's just take what do we have he's looking to does he take with his pawn no it's a okay let's go here that might have been the wrong way actually I should have gone there king got pawn majority on this side so let's work our way over here somehow get to here probably drop this one yeah let's capture that's okay let's go here split these pawns up at least so that's a good thing and what do we have probably drop this pawn on the bishop no it doesn't interesting oh look at this pawn here we let the pawn go savage times savage 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 oh dear at me that was not a good uh, demonstration that was not a good demonstration kid dun, 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 dun. what are we attempting to do here some strange reason I feel these pawns can look after themselves Let's go here. I don't really want that pawn. I'm just moving to move. Something's telling me they can look after themselves. Let's go here. There. So he's got a runaway bride. Ah, very nice, very nice. I don't need to accept that situation. He has to come down for these pawns, but he can't. His king can't just get in at the minute because he's blocked there and he's blocked there. So he's working his way around to come around the other side. And at this point here, I think I'm sick of his bishop. Yeah, so exchange on our terms. Yeah. So we could do that if he takes, then we can get to his black pawn faster than he can over on this side. Yes! So hopefully we can use the basics and uh, get some advantage in this game. So developing the knight. Going to attack a piece with a smaller piece which is the pawn attacking the knight and again I'm going to attack the knight with a smaller piece which is the pawn and is there any more attacks there's a discover check with the check with the bishop actually on the knight here so we can push through open up the pawn here and as we mentioned in the intro video um, when you do pawns like moves like these, normally at this <coughs> at this level, um, they miss those opportunities. So we can actually grab this knight 
if his knight wants to take we've got the queen supporting the knight here so he doesn't take so we, we can capture his knight here his pawn grabs so his pawn currently has got no protection on if he does capture and so he's gone for the two moves with the pawn and this is where we can use on pass on if need be have to be careful because he does have this pawn behind here which could fork our bishop and our knight but he doesn't have anything currently supporting that but also our knight is currently under attack from the pawn and it's not actually he's not actually taken our knight so we could save our knight and bring the knight back I think that makes more sense than actually doing the en passant. So let's save the knight. And this opponent's moving very fast now. Again, we could do the en passant type thing. It opens up his queen, because his queen probably takes or his pawn takes here. But you still have to be very careful, because you could still be falling into a trap of some sort. Our queen does have a diagonal towards the king, but the bishop will just come and defend, so it's not too much of an attack. We could look to develop our bishop. Again, like I said, we could do one pass on, but do we really want to invite the queen in? Do we even want to open this rook up? Because the rook could come here towards the king side. Okay, so there's things to think about, and I'm going to attack his pawn here after all of that uh, decision. So there's moments to attack and defend, so the knight can defend here. We could have gone for the queen exchange type situation, because we are up material. Um, we could still look to do that. Could capture this pawn in the meantime, because his queen is no longer there. And he's still not wanting to attack, so we could take, but then it opens his bishop. So we could just push the pawn forward a little bit. Now he's attacking our piece, so we can bring the bishop here with a discovered check on his higher piece, which is the queen. Which means our knight can actually go anywhere, so we can just bring the knight here for now. Doesn't move his queen, so we can actually capture the queen. We do have a check on his king with our knight, but in the meantime we'll just capture the pawn here. Knight can put a check on the king like we said. Bishop's got a nice diagonal towards the king so it can attack the king. Well not just come to this position first. And the knight's jumped onto the rook. So I think they're playing give up chess now. <laughs> and we can capture here with the queen. And we're looking to try and um, suffocate the king. Like I say, it's not always straightforward when... Let's just go here with a check on the king. And he's on the dark square. Let's develop this dark square bishop. See how I'm trying to work my pieces together. I'm not relying on one piece. Um, maybe we could have done this move, but his king still escapes. And then if we bring the bishop here... Okay, so he's going to be attacking our, uh, let's go with this bishop attack. Okay, so then we can go here with the queen, and then working the pieces together, bring the bishop here, and then his bishop blocks, and then that's checkmate. Okay, so it's a 15 minute to 10 second game, as part of the Christmas special for absolute beginners so hopefully we can spend a bit more time looking at the potential movers, movements that we can make so this pawn here was being attacked by our knight now the opponent's defended so as you've seen in our previous videos we'll just push through the center here And we'll capture 
as part of this series we're keeping it simple capturing where we can if the opponent gives us something we're taking it um, so long as it's beneficial to us and we're not going to lose out in the short term <laughs> we're not looking long term at this moment in time because this is just for absolute beginners we're looking at keeping it simple straight to the point a smaller piece attacking a higher piece would defend the king we could bring our bishop here to look to exchange but then his knight will be able to take our our knight so a smaller piece attacking the higher piece also doubly protecting the knight seems to make sense so it's the smallest of things about attacking key pieces using the smallest of um, tools that you've got to actually gain advantage so we've got two pieces under attack at the minute we can simply capture with the queen here and if they don't move the bishop we can take the bishop as well so we've got to this sort of position fairly quickly but it's getting a good understanding of capturing pieces getting pieces off the board so that your opponent themselves can't have an artillery an army that can come and attack you later on and this strategy seems to work quite nicely against even higher rated players so this isn't just really um, a strategy that I'm throwing in there for beginners per se it is really about well looking at beginners beating higher level players as well because the confusing factor about taking the pieces off the board is the fact that they don't have any artillery left now this diagonal here is an interesting one you can take the pawn but they're potentially looking to come here with their bishop to attack the queen because the knight and the queen are protecting this pawn is currently okay so we could take the pawn and then if the bishop does come down we can bring our queen back down to say here does that make sense or maybe to here because his knight will come and attack or do we just develop our other pieces in the eyes of what we're actually doing within this particular game is about attack 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 so we're going to attack to see whether or not the bishop does actually come there if they don't then we can take the rook for free and they have done so we've worked out that we have a safe square to go back to apparently so let's bring the queen back down so we've actually grabbed a neck a pawn extra from that particular opening so far but mindful that you don't want to overwork your pieces either and we've overworked our queen because he's come out grabbed a pawn it's had to come back again and we need to start looking at developing our pieces but develop the pieces for a reason don't just develop the pieces just to say well i need to get it out but it's not doing anything if it's either protecting a piece or it's allowing you to actually go and castle for king safety um, or you, you can attack a piece then move it so have your own rationale as to what you're doing with that that piece so now the knights moved here this is a key square because the rook is obviously going to come and challenge the queen okay so that's something to be mindful of excuse me and um, so in the meantime what do we have are we thinking of castling kingside can our bishop come out and do some damage to their bishop because now the queen is not protecting that but if we did do that the rook can still come across here then it's got the pin through to our queen so in essence we've basically given them a bishop yeah if we do do that so it's little things like that we've got to be careful of let's see so we could bring the bishop out but just bring it to this point here I think his rook is going to challenge I'm going to bring it here because of the diagonal that we've got towards their queen here 
I still believe this will come. So the diagonal has gone. Well, he's actually blocked that attack. But or, or has he just opened up his wide square bishop? Either way, he's blocked the attack. Does that win us a bit of a tempo in terms of developing our knight so we can castle onto queenside? Going to bring the knight out so that we can potentially castle on the queen side. Only because they've got this file here with their rook and stuff. So there's probably no point in castling on the king side because they're going to have all their armor, army coming down on that side. Now it's realized that we're looking to go and castle queen side. So if we go and castle queen side, this pawn is going to be attacked by the bishop here. Okay, so we can do one of two things. We can bring our bishop through here to attack the bishop. Probably expect the pawn to drop. He's got one piece, queen here, and the bishop on that square. So if we did capture the pawn, his knight can actually freely take here. So it's like an even exchange type thing. Is this something that we want to get into? I think so, as part of the strategy, which is to attack, 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 and capture where, where necessary, to reduce the amount of pieces that your opponent's got on the board, so they can't formulate any strategies against you. Keeping it simple, as a beginner, don't think of anything fancy, any fancy strategies or fancy openings, anything like that. Just get used to the feel of the pieces that you've got, what can they do, yeah? What can they attack? What can they take off the board? Get used to that feeling, yeah, of taking pieces off the board appropriately, being safe when you're doing it, and, and targeting. So it's not actually going with the pawn move. So our principle is, is capturing, and he wants to basically replace the bishop with the queen, so that he's still got this angle here on this pawn when we go in queenside castle. But also, I believe he wants to go on Queenside Castle himself. So I'm going to Queenside Castle. Our rook now is opposite his queen. It might not look like anything at this moment in time, but um, a few moves time, that might be a key position that we've got. Okay, so what we can do is potentially push this pawn here. If his pawn does take, our bishop takes, maybe his queen takes and our queen takes, then this rook is looking a little bit powerful like we said, putting the rook opposite the queen sometimes unsettles the situation. His white square bishop still has the attack here on our knight or bishop so we've got to be mindful of that. So I'm going to push the pawn up. So it's attacking a small piece but also attacking a higher piece in a fork. So ordinarily they would take, but he might be now thinking, well, ooh, he's going to do some sort of discover check type thing with, my, with his knight from his rook on my queen. So in these longer games, really do take your time to have a look at um, the potential attack positions that you can get and then potential capture um, positions that you can get and don't just throw them out willy-nilly um, I mean I say I'm not perfect like I've missed I've missed moves as you've seen in the previous um, seasonal instructional tutorial videos but you develop as you keep going through yeah and if I don't miss things then yeah, you'll think I'm some sort of robot or something so um, always think oh, it's pushed past interesting development so basically in a nutshell what is done there let's have a look at this he's come down to attack our bishop if we take his bishop because he's left this bishop here for, for, for us for free if he takes that bishop our knight can take the pawn and our rook is on his queen so I would assume his queen is probably going to come here to attack our knight because it's got no protection on so our rook can take his rook because it's got a check on his king and the only, well the, the king can take but I would expect that the rook would take here 
So in the meantime, our knight is being under attack from his queen. And his queen is here, around about our king area. But I suppose we can allow them to take the um, because our pawn would be on their knight, so we'd be able to take here. So, I think there's an advantage after all of that. It's To me, I think I went too far there because I'm like going forward with the calculations. Um, you don't need to look that far as a beginner, but if you can, um, it, it helps with your development going forward. Um, being able to calculate up to a certain point is okay, but you have to remember this key thing, this one key thing, your opponent does not have to follow your calculation unless it's a forced thing where you've put in checks on the king yeah um, or you're really sort of like controlling or, or maneuvering or they have to make this move because or else they're going to lose maybe their queen or their rook or whatever um, then just remember the opponent does not have to make those moves even the only only one that they have to make a move on really is a check on the king you know is the king they may want to sacrifice their queen for a better position they might sacrifice their rook for a set, um, better position so your calculation that you make is just your calculation yeah if they follow it the way that you calculated then that's all good but always remember especially as a beginner just remember your opponent does not have to respond the way that you think so we're going to capture his bishop because he's left it it's a smaller piece attacking a higher piece he can do the same thing to us and we've worked out that potentially we can take here and it leaves his queen open for an attack on his area what did we say he's not followed anything that we've calculated so now we have to reassess our our situation and our initial calculation yeah and and say well what actually happened here he's now attacking our queen yeah so a smaller piece attacking a higher piece he's still got this pawn on our bishop so this makes for an interesting situation queen could move across here doesn't really want to go here because the he's got a discovered check from, from his bishop so we don't want to go, go there um, I think that's a, a safest move we could go here but then his queen nah. so I think safest bet is going here for now his knight can always come back around again to attack the queen but we'll go here for now and that's exactly the point that I was talking about. The opponent does not have to do what you have calculated, and you've got you've then got to reassess what you're um, trying to do. So now he's caught the pawn. So this is another version of that, and we now his queen can't go here, but his bishop can take the knight. Yeah. So have they won out? Probably so, there may be plus one after all of that, which... But if his bishop takes, he's got to be careful of this. So we'll wait to see what the opponent does in this situation. Um, and that's, if he goes there, the queen takes his queen, so he does lose tempo, but maybe here would be better for them because then he's actually on the knight. Yeah, because on the night is also facing our king area, which we don't really want to be happening. So we could turn the knight around and attack the queen here, so then it's not being attacked. But he's gone further down, so he's gone in that area, still attacking the knight. Yeah, so queen's got a nice position here, but we can't get it just yet bishop's got a nice diagonal but there's nothing doing there see i'm looking for the attack positions first um obviously the rook's got the check thing but i think i'm going to sit and wait on that one 
because of this situation. A smaller piece attacking the higher piece, but the pawn is going here. So we could go with the knight movement still, because it's blocking the queen. This queen then has got the horizontal going onto our bishop. Okay, so let's make that move. Because he had the two on one with his bishop and his queen. We've blocked the queen. He's got diagonal onto our rook. So in essence he could go there, but we've got the rook protecting, we've got the queen protecting. And he's got this awesome knight that's the oh he's gone for the rook thing. Okay, so let's just capture. We could go for a queen exchange, yeah. Well, an attempt at a queen exchange, but if we went here with that, his queen would just take our bishop here with a check on our king. So we have to be mindful of that situation. So let's go here. So kind of open, owning the file, but realistically he can always look for an exchange because his king is supporting this area at the top. So we're trying to utilize our own bits. We'll feeling some sort of pressure on these areas as best possible and his bishop's taken the golden pawn but I believe in my heart of hearts that that was a mistake but it's a it's about proving that that was a mistake if my bishop takes this pawn yep I'm on his knight so I can take his knight if he leaves his knight there yeah with a check on his king and you know what I was meant to do an arrow to the um, pawn not actually capture it just yet because I wanted to talk it through and I've just realized that I've taken it so <laughs> All right, then. no problem though, no problem, because I was going to do that anyway. Um, so yeah, so we've captured. If the king does capture, then obviously it takes itself off of the um, check when I, if I take the knight. He doesn't have to capture, that's the thing. He doesn't have to do anything that I'm calculating. And always be mindful of that and then think of, well, okay, if they don't do anything, what, what can we do next? But don't go too far with the calculation. Like he's moved his knight now so that wasn't in our calculation okay so he's attacking our queen so basically his king is going to have time to actually capture the bishop or not because our queen can just move to here defending the bishop also attacking the knight that's what we believe so i think we'll move the queen here just protecting the bishop for now attacking the knight can't take the knight because the queen is protecting that area so what is my opponent is right in front of our king area so there's a real worry hat that he's going to get some sort of jostling position going on our bishop is controlling this key square that maybe they wanted their rook to come to so i think the rook is now going to try and own this file to try and come down and do something yeah to get into the game So the queen now is feeling, I don't want to be babysitting this, this rook, this knight, sorry. So the knight maybe is going to go back to here to feel a bit safe so that then it can get back into the action. White square bishop is saying, well, I've come down this far, but I don't really want to be there. So it might come here to attack the rook. Yeah, to give itself a little bit of strength. So that would be a little bit irking. But our rook is looking to come here. And the reason being, obviously, it's got the check on the queen. Oh, and he's gone for it. Oh, <laughs> it moved again. I meant to do the arrows. I need to stop that. So, um, so the rook is now facing the queen with the protection from our pawn. This bishop attack can't do anything now. Uh, so it's blocked its own queen, really. It's not really a big force. But we have got this double attack on the knights now. So the queen has to move somewhere more appropriate. It's not going to sacrifice itself. It's not going to go there. It can go here. There we go. And, and that's not an exchange per se, but it's putting pressure. Is he going for our king? Got to be careful. Going to take with the rook. Oh, do you know what's going to happen? 
going to take the bishop. Yeah. So he's going to take the bishop after we've taken the knight. Yeah, and then our queen, I think we can take that off the board. And then it's equal. Ah. Uh, that's annoying, isn't it? So we don't win the tempo. Thought we had, ooh. Oh, I thought that could have gone there, but you know, it's bishops there. So, don't really want him getting that back. What have we got? One, two. And he's got one, two. So it would be an even exchange. Mm, nothing major. Hmm. Is there something better? Attack. The principle of this thing is attack. So we take, and then he takes, and then we take, and then his king takes. So his king is exposed. And knight comes to put a check on the king. Maybe the king comes down for the knight. If the king comes down for the knight, then we win his bishop because we would come and fork here. Okay, something like that. But as we've already shown, the opponent does not have to do what we've calculated. They'll have their own plan. And I might not see what their plan is until it's too late. And also you have to remember what you've calculated if they are following the line that you actually said in the first place. Okay, so the idea was that his queen takes. That takes. King takes. Knight here. Maybe the king comes down. We get the fork then. Yeah, that's in the ideal world. Yeah, that's the perfect picture. So they're putting some thought into it, doing their own calculations. And it does capture. So we said we were going to capture. Does anything change? No, let's just go with that. And then bring the knight up, but putting the check on. Does the king come and attack the knight? If he does, we've got the gold and we've won the bishop. Oh, he, come on, the, he, he calculated. Damn. Okay, right, let's attack the bishop then. Damn. Oh, so that's the annoying bit, you know, you want to get that gold. But, like I say, your opponent is calculating too. So how do we work this now? We're actually plus two at the moment. But that means nothing if we can't convert it. We need to find good positions based on attacking. We've got to just keep on attacking. So he moved his bishop out of the way. But his rook, but our rook has got a discovered check on it. Could we do something? Is there anything? The knight can't put a check on the king or else we'd get away with that. Could bring the knight here looking to develop towards attacking these these pawns at the same time as having this discovered check. His bishop's probably going to come here to attack the pawn here so he's in attack mode. It's not gone for the attack mode and the discovered check that we said on the bishop seems to have panned out. Okay, so that seems to be working. If you can see my thought process, I'm talking it through with you. There's no mastery to it, there's just a matter of attacking and attacking and looking at um, situations that allow you to attack your opponent's pieces and, and get them off the board. That's favourable for you. So there's no mastical mystery type thing to it. Just keep attacking, keep practicing what the moves of the pieces can do and um, that can help you to get good positions on the board. 
every move that you make try and make it either a, a move that blocks the opponent's attacks or a move that enhances your attacking potential so currently we're plus five at the moment based on this this strategy that we're using for this particular series the Christmas seasonal 2020 series and the strategy is capture pieces remove them off the board get that good position and just keep capturing and keep capturing all the way through the game so that you reduce down the amount of pieces that the opponent has to attack you with basically keeping it as simple as that so he's moved to the far side now so he can come and attack our king and our knight can act as a blocker here if we want to keep it simple but is there a fork of anything was potentially half a fork but then it's like giving still giving him the rook coming down here then he'll get these pawns so i think playing safe defense just blocking off with the knight seems appropriate i think he's probably just going to come and simply try and take these pawns off this pawn off here so it's at this stage now where you have to really be careful because you're the one with the advantage and it's so easy to lose that advantage because you've got more pieces on the board so you have more pieces to think about in terms of what can I attack what can I what do I need to defend when you're in this sort of situation nine times out of ten the lower rated players will go right I'm gonna go all in for a checkmate now yeah and that's when they lose their pieces they lose their position and they make the opponent look good so this is where I'm going to attempt to try and not make the opponent look good and try and find good positions oh my word exact position okay so in my head I had my rook coming here just to simply protect <coughs> and not do anything too extrovert yeah because if the knight comes here looking to protect it he still does have this rook coming here and then as I've just shown here then his rook comes up again to there attacking these pawns and gets rid of them so there's no point in <coughs> going into that situation and I think I'll just bring the rook across here so now this is I'm in the mode of aggressive defending now I'm not looking for any checkmate positions unless of course the opponent gives it to me on a plate so I'm aggressively looking to defend as best possible whilst my opponent is going to be looking to try and get a win out of the out of the situation the knight does have this but it's not good enough I don't think because I really want the rook but he's not going to give it to me I want the fork mm -hmm. so we could look to support this pawn with a pawn yeah he could always drop his pawn here to block that off but let for the spirit of the game yeah let's push this pawn up so that we're supporting this with this if we can probably just bring this pawn down here so as you can see we're aggressively defending attempting to aggressively defend so that we can mobilize our pieces we don't really want to rook babysitting the pawn so we're attempting to get a pawn supporting the pawn The Scud missile thing that we mentioned in the earlier part of the um, series. Yep, at this moment in time, I don't need to worry too much about this now until such time as he's probably going to bring his rook and support maybe this pawn going down. But because we have this pawn here, the pawn will disappear. So I think he'll attempt to link these pawns up and try and mosey them down. But because we've got two pawns facing them, it's not too much of an issue. The big issue is we've got a poor majority on this side here so we can start moving those up towards the uh, king area well towards um, getting promotion but we're not going to do that just yet we're still looking at some magical forks but he's not giving it to us at this moment so what's he trying to do with this rook yeah so he's moved the rook back if he does come across here there's no real space if he comes here there's no space to attack our king um, so I'm going to continue with the pawn push up 
if he comes down for the pawn then we can just push our pawn here to support and we're further advancing our pawns up without too much strain on our pieces yeah so he's gone the other way attacking the pawn so he's either way he's attacking the pawn so we're going to push the pawn here So time's running down, but we're on four minutes and they're on five minutes. It's a ten, ten minute, ten second increment, sorry. So it's 15 minute, 10 second game. So it has given us enough time to uh, think about what we're doing. And yeah, so now he's now looking to try and destroy the pawn structure. We can move our rook across. Yeah, just move it across here. So then if he does take, then we can take back with our pawn and we're pressuring that area. And I think that's the more sensible thing to do. Yeah. So simply just aggressively defending again all the way through this part of the game now because I have more, more material on the board our opponent is looking for ways to break through and they will do if we think we're going to win by going for a checkmate position on their king. So that's lovely. So he's brought his rook down, pawn down now so that has no more activity in the game. This pawn has no more activity in the game. So we need to find an appropriate position now for our pieces. I could bring the rook here now onto this file. Uh, yes, I think that should be okay. Could come here. Yeah, we've got options and choices. So either way we want to just maybe get to the back here so that we're pressuring this pawn. So let's go to this side here. Always our knight is looking for this fork. Yeah, it can go there any stage, but there's no point just yet. Our rook is looking to come here, and then this rook potentially is babysitting this pawn, which is not, that's not what it's designed for. So at that stage then, our king can start moving up, the knight can put the fork on here potentially, yep. Can come this way, can come round to that side, can go all over the place, so. Fingers crossed, it's looking pretty favourable. It's based on the ass, so now he's moving his king down, looking to try and get rid of these pawns, maybe. And he's taking his king off of the fork process as well, for now. So I'm going to bring the rook up, because we're onto two pawns, so which one can he save now? So he can't save both of them. So potentially, I think, because he wants to keep his pawns linked, he may as well push this pawn down. But really, dead. these pawns aren't strong enough. So he's not actually done that. So we can take this pawn now with a check on the king. So he saved this, <coughs> saved this pawn because he doesn't want us maybe to get a pass pawn. But now we've got a pass pawn here. And the key danger was these linked pawns. And now because they've sort of split, I don't think there's going to be too much for us to worry about in terms of any further development along this side. So we can, got to still be careful. Uh, da -da -da -da. Don't want to come down there because that just wastes time. Just bring this back centrally here. It's nothing worse than rushing it now that you've got to this position here and then you, you make a mistake. Why am I doing these moves? I still want to keep pressure on this pawn so that then his, his rook is just not in the game at all. And then we can look to fashion, maybe knight movements, at some point to try and get this pawn here. This pawn is pushing down and it's really got nowhere to go. Um, but you still have to be careful. Knight can come here. Or oh, do, 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 do. can go there to come here to attack this pawn. Yeah. So we're going to go with that motion to double up on this pawn here. You have to be careful sometimes when you free up a piece that you think, yeah, okay, uh, this rook is being forced to protect this pawn. But then once it's released, it might be a crazy rook. So he's actually attacking, so we can put the fork on the king, so the king has to move. But you know what, the king is going to attack our rook. And this is the sort of situation that we have to be mindful of. But when it does attack, we can take the pawn here. And if the king takes our knight, our rook takes the rook. So we capture the pawn here, nothing to worry about there. Initially, 
look tight but positionally because we've already got it it's set in place it makes it a little bit easier for us to go for it. and it's not going for the exchange so the knight itself does have a fork on the king more than does it not no it can move so what do we want to do the king could come here and his rook is going to come down for the knight so we need to position it so that it can do much damage so this is the key point this is what i was saying you you, you really you can release the piece that you think you had held to ransom which is the rook and now it turned into a little bit of a beast you know coming in there it's attacking trying to attack the key squares so you have to be very careful still so it's attacking the knight so we we'll just bring the pawn here defending the knight I'm not going to move the knight anywhere now <clears throat> because we don't want the rook having the space to come down to attack our king and the knight has done this before earlier on in the game blocking the knight uh, blocking the rook's activity on the file it's always a good handy tactic to use using the knight to block the rook's activity because that's their strength on the open files so now as you can see we're looking to attempt to get the pass pawns promoted but we're not going to rush it we're going to take our time and try and get the better positions keep ourselves safe so he's going for a two on one potentially is he, is he going to sacrifice if we bring our rook here yeah then his king can come here yeah so if his king comes there you know thinking he's attacking the rook then the pawn can push up protected by the uh protected by the rook but then the queen king can take and where does the pawn go so that would be no good because the pawn would take there but then the queen would take and we would have a knight and the king type situation so don't really want to go down those road because we still have the knight um, it just takes a little bit longer to make those moves so we could just simply push this pawn because it is a pass pawn so if his rook does take our knight our pawn takes these pawns are getting promoted no, no problems so now you can envisage that the rook is probably going to come here to again block off a pawn that it doesn't really want to do. It's oh I see. Yeah, so he wants to maybe get his king into this little square here to stop my king from getting to here. But then what really what can the rook do? The rook can't really come down here because the king will take it. Mm-hmm. So there's still still pressure that he can potentially put going to push the pawn past pawns want to be pushed and if his rook blocks there we can always just attack the rook and then we get a queen so understanding the movements of the pawns and the rhythm of the rook being able to get the queen put pressure onto the rook still looking at what he can potentially do in terms of attacking me but I don't that his rook can't come down to attack here my queen my king would need to be here for that to be devastating because his king would be there then his rook would come down and that would be checkmate but because our king is on this square there's no dice because it's chess <laughs> sorry that was a bad one Okay, so we're on two minutes and they've resigned. Okay, let's have a look at the analysis on that game uh, just to see the ups and downs um, in terms of our thinking versus a computer. So we opened, attacked the pawn, attacked the pawn again, and attacked the pawn again, captured. And then we attacked the bishop, and this strange move here, we, then we captured the knight captured the pawn and maneuvered the queen to safety then looking to attack the pawn at the side of the queen developing the knight looking to develop the knight through and support the bishop attacking the bishop 
Queenside Castle, a smaller piece attacking a higher piece again. See these little t little attacks building up, taking the bishop, moving the queen out of the way, and basically capturing with a discover check onto the queen. And this this part here was getting a little bit tricky, but bringing through the discover check onto the queen from the rook is quite handy. Capturing and attacks with discovered checks and again just simply moving and attacking and lovely double attack here capturing and capturing and now looking at better position on the board developing the pieces I think we're two plus plus two is it here at this moment in time one two three four five six one two three four yep plus two Discover check onto a piece, very key, a key process for anybody playing chess, especially beginners, understanding the movements of the game in terms of placing your pieces where you potentially can attack a piece or capture a piece so that you're safe. And from this point on, we were aggressively defending. Yep. So at each stage, aggressively defending, but also counter-attacking, because as you can see, our pawns are getting further advanced up the board. We're thinking of defending this pawn on the G, F, sorry. But as we're doing that, we're being aggressive in moving forward. <clears throat> so again, simple movements, understanding the, the rhythm of the game, bringing the rook across uh, to stop the pawn from actually winning our pawn and the rook winning our extra pawn. So now our rook can freely attack their pawn and we hold their pawn to ransom because the rook is now having to babysit. So that gives us a chance to put a check on the king, develop the knight through, looking to um, take this pawn off on the f. At this moment here, had a little bit of a panic but then realised no, the rook can just simply take and he doesn't exchange so that gives us time to bring our knight down and again aggressively defend him. And now we can move forward with the pawn and at that stage there we would have been looking to get a promotion and the opponent resigned so a nice long game there for the seasonal period and this will be the last game in the series and the key points as always capture pieces remove pieces from the board um, strategically because when your opponent has no army, there can be no war. Appropriate positioning. Keeping it nice and simple as in the beginning stages of playing chess. Not looking at anything arty, not looking at any fancy openings. Uh, so our opponents just push past our, the pawn, so again we can just simply grab this pawn. I don't know what reason was given for that particular pawn push there. It allows us to be plus one, but it allows them to develop their knights ahead of our minor pieces, I suppose. So going to develop our knight. There's nothing to immediately attack. Again, nothing immediately to attack really so king safety is the key thing for us so we may as well develop the bishop so we can go and castle now he's pushing through the center because we don't have anything to block his way apart from this pawn here but if we push this pawn up got to be careful if we push this pawn up he does have his knight and his queen and the pawn on there so we would lose the pawn. We are plus one anyway, but what we don't want is this pawn scud, missile, scud missiling down onto our knight. So in essence, we could give the pawn back. He could still push past and still scud missile the knight. We just maneuver our knight to somewhere else. So they do capture, so they've got the pawn back. So I'm going to grab. Now that was a mistake. Why was it a mistake? Because our queen can't take the knight back. 
because his queen is supporting. So we could have just left the pawn in the centre of the board rather than taking. This is the type of stuff that I see quite often in lower rated players games. So how do we then make that a stronger position for us? Well, it's a matter of now trying to find a better position. So I'm going to press onto the knight. The knight moves, then we take the queen off the board, so we get a big gun off the board. And then we have to reposition our pieces to get a better position on the board. So he's actually given us the knight back. So we might as well, we can actually take the queen, get the big guns off, because it's got a check on his king. But he's actually given us that piece back. We can't castle, he can't castle, because we've moved our king. Simple pawn push up to the bishop here. So that was almost like a free gift. So then putting pressure onto the king while we readjust our own king. We can develop our, our bishop now. Basically maybe attacking. That's the principle of this series. So attacking the knight. Looking to maybe develop our other knight to get it off the back so we're supporting our rooks. So it does attack, so we can double the pawns up here, so he'll capture with the pawn. Could develop our knight that way or this way, but this bishop will take, so we may as well come this way. So now at least our rooks are linked up. At this stage here, we can push onto the bishop, because we've got the support of the pawn. And again, what the opponent did by gifting the knight back, that type of stuff I have also seen quite a lot of in lower rated games. We do have the option, we can go here with the attempt at attacking this pawn, but I believe his bishop will take and then the pawn takes here and then his rook would take our pawn, so that's not going to work from the outset. So developing the knight I believe is something to open up our rook and get the other rook behind it as simple as possible trying to own this file but I believe maybe the rook is going to come across no it's not it's actually challenging the pawn so for now we could allow him to take that pawn because his rook isn't actually on it at the moment so we could continue with looking to double our pawns we do have the knight here which can go and attack this pawn bishop takes the rook takes them owning that file could push this pawn up to doubly defend the pawn. I'm actually going to... There is an issue with that because he does have the bishops. Because if we moved here, his bishop comes and attacks us on this diagonal. If we move there, the bishop takes. If we move here, the bishop comes and attacks the rook there. If we go here, the bishop... White square bishop can't come and attack. So let's go there. I think they'll continue with the pawn taking. So we can take back. And then they move their white square bishop. Potentially to come and attack our rook here. So then. Our rook would have to come down to face off the bishop. But then his rook takes the pawn and we can't take the bishop. Another rookie error. But he's not taken that opportunity yet. He's winning a tempo by attacking our knight. So our knight needs to readjust. But readjusting probably to a nice position to protect the pawn. Bishop's probably still looking to come here. But we don't need to panic so much now. Oh, the bishop is actually attacking the knight. King can protect. Could still look to double. Or... If he does take, we've got time. If he does take the knight, and then the king takes, the bishop can't really come here because the king can take, but then his rook can come down and put a check on. So I don't think we lose out in sense of this pawn. We could push this pawn just to make sure. Let's just push this pawn anyway, just to back this pawn up. It does capture 
his king is currently opposite our king so nothing to worry about there with the rooks so far but there's something I'm missing here and there's a tempo that we have lost because we're now a minor piece down so yet again a rookie error has been made a beginner error has been made our tempo has been done wrong again so how do we regroup again from this position so we do have discovered checks on his king but his rook is looking to come here to put a check on our king and then making its way down to attack our pawns on the back so I'm going to move my king off of the line he's also defending his king because our rook potentially was coming here to put a check on so let's move this king further down I'm going to follow the ownership of this file because I don't think there's any point actually coming here because his rook is ready to go here so we've had to regroup this is the third time I think in this particular game with errors being made right from the start but as a beginner in chess these are the types of things that it's good to actually start practicing we did mention that the bishop could potentially attack here so we're going to uh, attack the king because we've got the doubled rooks at the minute could take this pawn here there's a discovered check from his bishop so his rook could actually just take this pawn because his bishop is on our rook our rook could come down and just put a check on the king here so this rook is uh, doing a quite a nice job of blocking off the attacks that we can put in place we could look to actually push forward if the rook takes then our rook can come up here put a check on the king king comes down to safety a little bit here that might not be as good as we're thinking so what do we do if we go here his rook takes this pawn because he's got the bishop check bring the rook down with a check on his king his king can go either way can go up or down probably go back maybe yes so let's think this through the king can attack the bishop that's a nice small move let's do that make the king aggressive let's uh, see what this bishop wants to do could come down and attack both of our rooks are on um, white squares Brought, also his rook can come down so if we take but we've got a check on his king so he has to do something about it which is probably bishop taking yep so and the bishop takes and he's got to discover check on our rook if his king moves yeah so the bishop takes then his rook has got an avenue down here towards our king so we're going to have to do another small move which is just bring the king here but then he takes the pawn mm Hmm. is there anything else if we move the king here he could take the pawn but then we would take his bishop but then his pawn is passed because he can push past interesting situation things to think about if we take king can take supporting the bishop even but I don't think so because our rook would take the pawn <coughs> so the bishop takes the bishops here if our king moves up so that we've got a line of sight for the king but then our rook is attacked small details I don't really want to take the pawn I really want to put my king here but then he gets the tempo by just taking here we take back this rook's not necessarily going to take just yet 
going to have to wait for the bishop to come here then we can push the pawn past a little bit I'm going to move the king aggressive king try and make some space in front of his king although I need to move this rook obviously to one side or the other because his king is waiting to take that so that we can potentially start putting some pressure on, on the king because the king is in the centre of the board and oh ours is, oh he's actually gone for this attack yeah, so he wants us to move off of the line so well, let's attack this uh, bishop get it on a dark square and like we say can't really manoeuvre this rook until this rook has found safe haven maybe to here or can come back either way it depends on what they do next so playing longer games really does give you that time to think about moves yep and like I'm saying for this particular series yes you're going to make mistakes um, I'm glad these mistakes have been made in this particular game just to show that we're trying to fight back and that's really how you improve your game by actually playing games that really do test your metal because then you, you you make better moves next time so he's going to have a two on one yeah with his rook on the pawn well three on one rather yeah so then his pawn can freely take so we're going to have to move our king back or we can move it here we've got two spaces that we can move it to but i'd rather move it here for now because then if he takes then takes back here rooks takes but it's not actually attacking our king whereas if we went onto this file here he could actually just do a rook check type situation bearing in mind he still has his bishop here which is under attack so any type of combination of stuff he's going to have to think about moving his bishop as well I've got to be mindful my king my rook is under attack from their king that's an interesting move has he not given us it back but we may have fallen into a trap so we're not going to get giddy with this because pawn takes pawn takes rook takes so initially now we're basically plus one as it's showing on the table here so was that a panic move or is it a set player thing so I'm glad these things are happening in this game we're both making errors and mistakes in this game and that's how you improve in chess there's no other way around it um, you could play chess by yourself for as many million years as you want but you have to play other people and playing online yes there's a variety of um, levels that you can play against fingers crossed hopefully I think they've left the game yeah it's showing they've left the game here oh, it might be because they brought the bishop there I, don't, I really don't know why that bishop was put there but um, same point in question I don't know why I did certain moves in what I did but the idea behind it is you'll always feel like that you'll always feel like that playing chess you'll have your good days where you're actually wiping everybody off the board you know and you'll go away going yes that's fantastic it's all coming together and then you'll have other days where you, you can't win a game you know and so then you go back to the drawing board and you're, you're basically looking at how it is that that happened look at the evaluation and then you'll say to yourself i can't believe i made that move why did i make that move that's always the key question in any chess game you ask any chess player why did i make that move so it looks like the player it's got 11 10 seconds left now so it looks like they are actually leaving the game and that's one of the key things I'm, I'm trying to get across as well is that when you're playing online we'll, we will claim victory on this so in keeping with our one strategy capture if there's no captures get your pieces positioned so that you can get your king to safety that's it it's a simple strategy looks like we've got a slow a slow plodder 
I think uh, it's a 15 minute 10 second game so you can expect longer longer times for people making moves but some do actually take it to the nth degree which is quite annoying where they probably don't make a move and they don't make a move um, and then it gets down to three minutes and they haven't made a move you know um, so there's taking it too far so the knight now attacking the queen let me see where he wants to go does he want to exchange the queen off or is he going to go to this secret hideout here over in this corner does he put a check on goes into the secret hideout just develop the knight in readiness to get my king safe it's two schools of fought do you develop the bishop next or do you push this pawn through the centre? In the elements of keeping your king safe, you develop your white square bishop, you know, to give space as a beginner. Um, and when, I say, when I'm saying as a beginner, yeah, I'm saying absolute beginner who's just started. But it also bodes well for anybody really playing chess, these sort of concepts. Because they're, I'm going to show a game playing against like a what I class as a high level player, 1800 area, uh, using the same principles. So it really doesn't matter who you're playing against, as long as you're using the right methodology. I'm going to give my dark square bishop some air. So I don't believe this knight can trouble our castling process at the moment, so this is why I'm giving both of my bishops some air. If their bishop had come and attacked our knight, I potentially would have brought my bishop here in readiness for castling, but they haven't done so. Okay, so let's just... We could attack the knight. In keeping with this system, I'm going to attack the knight. Now the bishops come here. Don't really mind doubling the pawns up so much, but the queen is there to protect anyway. And in keeping with our system, I'm going to capture the knight. So I'm trying to work with the theory that the less pieces that the opponent has on the board, the less pieces I have on the board as well, yeah? Um, the less strategies that they can throw at you. There's less pieces that they, they can pull together to actually attack you and get a checkmate on you. It's a simple concept, but it does seem to work when done correctly. Then we go for this basic thing here, which is what they're expecting. The bishop putting the discovered check through to the queen. Queen then hides into this corner here, putting pressure onto the b-pawn. Yep. So then when you push, then the queen comes down here, attacking the knight, maybe. Yep. I don't really want to do that. I want to just go and castle, and I am going to go and castle. I'll leave the queen there for now while we try and jostle better position with our pieces if we've got any left. So it's got one, and where is it? Opposite the queen. So we've got to be mindful of rooks being opposite the queen because activity can take place. Yeah, such as the pawn pushing down here onto this pawn. This pawn would not be able to take because the rook would take the queen. So he does capture. So now we're actually onto this pawn with a check on his king, so he has to be mindful of that. It's moved down dead quick with the rook. It is a 15 minute 10 second game, so is there a set play? Because our queen still has this pawn, there's nothing protecting here and we do have a check on his king. I suppose his knight can go back to protect, but we would have grabbed a pawn. Is he then looking to run across here and then run across there? but can we not just simply push the pawn up here? Let's grab with a check. So capture him with a check on the king. 
and the rook has come back <coughs> could challenge that rook I've got to remember to keep pressing the arrow button I was just about to press the drag or cross then um, <coughs> so we could bring our rook across here and that's then challenging the rook because we've got a pin through on the, the rook through to the king does he have a blocker? the blocker could be the knight coming here and we could take the knight if his queen takes then the rook would take the queen so seems doable let's just bring the rook across and I'm only using the arrows because of the series that we're working on um, these are not assistive tools in, in my eyes these are like trying to show the sort of thought process as well as me talking about the process um, some people are visual so they like to see what you're actually talking about rather than you know verbalizing it in my normal games I don't use the arrows but for instructional purposes tutorial purposes um, I believe it's it's quite a nice touch So he's going for the queen exchange. So we can't really take the rook because the knight is there. Knight will take. I don't think there's any other immediate checks per se. Um, yeah, so it's sort of equalized the way in a sense. Mm, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. Because like the queen can come here, can't it? Don't do it. Let's just do the arrows. Queen can go here with a check on the king, so then the rook has to come back, and then we will be able to go checkmate with the queen. So I'm going to do that. It's a good job we stopped and paused to think about that. Because the king can't go anywhere, and the queen can come back to protect, but we still have that position. So then the queen just comes across here and checkmates. Yep. Okay, well that's a nice set of two games there. Um, shall we play another one just to um, finalise the, the process? Let's go for it. We can try and put some effort in here. The knight is attacking the pawn. Knight's defending. Let's attack the pawn again. Oh, we've got a thinker. Okay, that's good. It captures, so the knight captures the pawn. Keeping it simple. Doesn't capture, so we do have a position where we can capture. And I'm going to capture this pawn. Because the queen can still defend the knight. And I don't mind doubling my pawns up. Um, and not allowing my king to um, castle in this situation but maybe because of this um, series that we're doing maybe I should refrain from doing what I was going to do so I'm going to bring the bishop here which is defending the knight so I want to go and castle get king safety but at the same time so he does actually capture so let's capture taking the time with the capture so are they not wanting to capture now when they're thinking of something else moving the queen away does capture so we capture back okay so in keeping with the series that worked out quite nicely for us simple captures King safety is key for us, but we're not under threat at the minute until the dark square bishop potentially comes here. But it's easily defended by pushing the pawn up to protect. So he's going queenside castling, it looks like. Move the white square bishop, could move it to here if he is going to um, queenside castle, we'll be able to take this pawn.
So again, attacking a piece that potentially we could grab. And as you can see, throughout all of these, I am not using any fancy tools, any fancy methods or strategies or anything like that. We're trying to keep it as simple as possible and it seems to be working for us. Even from the first game where we made errors and blunders, it's about regrouping and hoping that your opponent then, well, don't like to say hope, but hey, you know, um, the game of, game of chess is a hope thing. I know some people go, um, you, you shouldn't say it's hope, chess, you're playing with tactics and strategies. Yeah, but you're hoping that the opponent doesn't do a, a certain move. You're hoping that the person follows the calculation that you've made. You're hoping, yeah, that you can get that pawn that you're targeting. You're hoping all the time. So when people say, oh, you're playing hope chess. Well, yeah, I am. Yeah, because I'm hoping that I, I come out in an advantageous position. Because there's no guarantees, no matter how good you are. I've looked at many, 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 many games. He's, he actually has gone queen ca queenside castling. But you know what? He thinks he's clever. I don't know if this bishop can do any damage. No, 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 no. Right, that's fine. So we can actually still grab the pawn. Because his rook is still facing our bishop, which has no protection on. So yeah, he has moved, but he's blocked us. Ah, yeah, he's blocked us from castling. But that's about it. So it's nothing to worry about there. So we can just push the pawn here to protect the bishop. So we were aware of what potentially could happen. I just thought, well, the bishop can't actually attack anything dangerous. If it could put a check on our king, then he would have won the bishop. If we didn't have anything to put in front of it. But that wasn't the case. And I think, for me... Oh, dear. Oh. Demonstrate. This bishop now is obviously going to pin the rook through to the king, so we've won the rook. Because the rook can't move because the king is there. Oh dear. I was just about to say, out of out of the games that you've played and the games that I've studied and I've, I've studied the grandmasters, you know, the old grandmaster levels, uh, we simply can take it. I might as well. It's a higher piece. Could have taken the knight, but um, I thought I'll just save that. And we can go and no, we can't castle. Let's go here. Then we can attack the bishop with the pawn. Yeah. So let me finish my sentence again. Oh, it's um, always come to block off any attempts at all. So I'm going to castle by hand, and I don't have a problem with that at all, because they've worked so hard to prevent me from castling. That this will be quite nice just to be able to sit my king on this little dark square here. He does have a dark square bishop which could potentially put pressure on us. And again, as always, he's actually taking so we'll well attempting to capture. And he's moving really fast now. So just move the king. Because he was moving that fast because he wanted his rook to be putting a check on our king. So we now can now put a check on his rook. I still haven't finished that sentence. I've got plenty of time now. I'm on, I've gone higher than what we started with. So. The elite players, the masters, the grandmaster level players, the old style players, yep, yeah, when they've played their games and every time, basically, they're hoping. Yep. Yeah. You watch their games and they you look at the way that they're moving the pieces all the way through the Kasparovs, the Carlsons, everybody, yeah, do you know? Um they're hoping that people don't make these moves. They're hoping that people give them a little bit of a break, you know? Um, oh dear. Take that. Just bring the rook here. So in essence, when we're making our moves, you don't know what the opponent's going to do. So you're hoping that they make a move that puts you in a good light. So when you hear people saying, oh, I've played, you're, not, you're playing hope chess. So what? Yep. So are you. When you're talking about your strategies, you're hoping that that person does move that way or else your strategy won't work. 
Let's go here, attack this pawn. There's a belief that, well, no, if you're playing hope chess, then you're not going to stand a chance. Yeah, the hope in my eyes comes from the fact that, yes, I've hopefully I've done some type of half decent calculation that covers off my attack process and then tries to block off my opponent's um, process. <clears throat> and throughout the beginning series that we've been running on, you've noticed that every time, well, most of the time when I've done my calculations, the opponent hasn't done what I've calculated. They may have done it in a roundabout way, but they've not done it in the move order that I have predicted. Yep. So that's me hoping that they go for it. When I'm doing a calculation, that's me hoping that they go for this. I've seen that so many times in uh, international master games, grandmaster games, online on you know YouTube. Yeah. They're hoping that people do make these um, errors or mistakes, and when they don't, then that's when they get shocked. You know, and then everybody goes, whoa, 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 that, that person's not playing true type thing. In some cases, that is the case, but in other cases, um, more so the case that they, they haven't done their calculations properly and they've moved too fast. And even they will say afterwards, oh, I, sh I could have taken it this way. I, I got a little bit too arty. Yeah, I could have simply taken the knight off the board or I simply could have taken the bishop off the board. You know, those when you hear those sort of comments, you know full well their calculation was too based on hope. <laughs> oh, this person, oh, I thought, thought they'd left the game there. So he's attacking this pawn here. It took a long pause there. Uh, it's attacking the pawn, so are we going to allow them to do that? We can't stop them. And so let them peel off a few pawns, I suppose, then. One, two, maybe knight coming here. You have to be careful with these positions. Just because I've got a rook doesn't mean I've won the game. He's got a bishop. He does have a knight, a flexible knight. So he can still do stuff. And I have a knight too. So if I can get my knight mobilized, maybe put pressure on this wide square bishop. Maybe if I just start pushing these pawns up. So he's attacking pawns left, right and centre, let's go here. If he gets to a decent position, attacks here, his bishop will probably take our knight. And uh, it's got a nice little fork on the king. That allows me to move up a little bit, doesn't it? He can take this pawn, but then the knight takes. I'm on 16 minutes. I'm not even utilizing that 10 second thing, so maybe if I take a little bit more time, I can find appropriate positions now. It's just at this moment, the opponent is doing the um, cornered cat thing. You know, they're just blasting away, grabbing pawns, trying to get my king. So I need to just do defensive, defensive, aggressive defensive work. does capture what fancy fork has he got okay so he's taken and he's actually going for the pawn as well so let's go here so he could speed these pawns down that's the issue so I've gone quiet now because I don't think this pawn will get um, promoted uh, what's he doing so he got a fork on my king and my no, he's got a fork on my king. Let's go here. Past pawns want to be pushed, so as far up as he can push them, you're best off. But I don't think this one will get promoted. Because his king will join into the party. Ooh, nice one. Got to be careful now here. Yeah. So if I go here, he does have a fork. He can get my rook. Yeah, get my rook. Uh -huh. Just pin the knight to the king. So the knight can't move now, but we do have an issue about this pawn. So just going to start moving these. This king is going to come here, so he takes himself off the pin. He's not doing that. My rook, my rook, my kingdom for a rook. If I move my king, I move it 
again. Smallest of detail, a little squid missile zooming down. Can't really ignore it. Um, my rook isn't going to get trapped, but he can take the pawn, but then I take his knight if his king takes the pawn. So he has to do a bit of jostling, I think. Ooh, nice attack. So if we come here, does he get a fork on my... Night, night, night. Let's come back again. So we're actually protecting the pawn here. 